runner. Go to my page. Testing out technology. If your if your wife is live, and we're trying to figure some stuff out. Hold on a sec. Live, you can go there and push share and share it while it's live. That would be cool. All right. Trying to get all this stuff figured out here so we will run smoother as we keep going in the week after week after week and get it going here. All right. Well, uh, we, we made it through the Christmas week and uh, God has blessed us with a, we have some ups and downs, but most of all, we had a lot more ups, and that's because of God. I want to thank Him for that. Um, as we get ready to kind of look at uh, this, uh, you want to turn my sound down just a little bit more? I feel like I'm ringing back. There we go. Um, I'm just trying to think of something to, uh, New Year's is coming in in a couple days, and this kind of something that will kind of just uh, head us in the right direction of a, a, of a really good year next year, and, um, and just reflecting on the things in the past, and mostly again this, uh, this past year, and uh, some of the things that have happened in our lives, and uh, um, just uh, I think some, some things that really stand out in my life as a... As a um, uh, I would say people in my life, you know, uh, of how we've been able to get through and what's been the most victorious ways to get through the life. And um, Because again, uh, I don't know about you, um, but in my life I've had a lot of troubles uh, through people. You know, uh, people have given me issues. Of, you know, you have, you're at the preacher's house and the police are sitting there. And so that kind of tells you what kind of troubles you got, you know, that are that. Are that. Um, so I was kind of just ask you this question right off the bat. How many have ever had a, a hurt heart? Somebody hurt your heart. Somebody hurt, ever hurt your heart? You know, and if you ain't putting your hand up, you're lying. All right. You know, uh, uh, it, it's been, uh, I, I would look at today is what we're going to look at, the, that, that God has really done pretty awesome in, in, the, in the Bible as in two, two books uh, that he uh, two, two subjects that he hit, and he wrote a chapter for each book. It was uh, like in Hebrews 11. He writes a whole chapter about faith, you know, and, and starts giving demonstrations of, that these men or these women did these things to have faith. And the other subject that he writes a whole chapter about is, is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and he writes about love. And in this, he, he talks about the demonstration of love and how, how it affects. And that's what we're going to look at today. Um, so if you turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if you don't have a Bible, we're going to have it on the screen. And uh, we'll also have it posted there um, uh, as we read along there. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to read through 1 through 8. Chapter, chapter 13, 1 through 8. 1 Corinthians 13. All right, let's begin. Uh, might help if I put it on the screen, what do you think? There we go. Maybe. Alright, there we go. Verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3. And though I bestow best, even though I best, hmm, I, I just, I don't leave my right 
bestow my goods to, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, I prof it profits me nothing. Verse 4. Just you want to click that? Mine is not going to click. There we go. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. <coughs> is not provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, just the part of it, the very first part, it says, love never fails. I would say our culture today is really big on quotes. We like that, uh, you know, especially if we can get a hashtag in front of it, you know, if we can get there, you know, you know hey, that's what we're going to get. I got 100 likes on that one, you know. Um, so here's a few quotes that I ran across that uh, I think it will uh, uh, give us in the right direction. It's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all by Alfred Tennyson. Tennyson. Um, knowledge is power, Francis Baconson. Um, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Alexander Pope. How about this one? God helps those that help themselves. I mean, I think that's something in the Bible, it's scripture. Think it's scripture? No, it's not scripture. Ben Franklin wrote that. It's, 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 it's pretty interesting on some of these quotes, but the one quote that I'm going to get to here. Um, it, I want to kind of give a background of this guy first. Uh, um, this guy here, he was the first um, African American to be put into the uh, uh, um, American uh, the uh, uh, American League of Baseball. Um, he was the he was a, a great pitcher. A pitcher. Um, he was inducted into the American League in 1982. Um, he played baseball for 20 years. His name is Leroy Satchel Page. He was one of the greatest pitchers ever to live. Um, he, he was in so he was so good at his pitching that one time he was playing this other team and they usually in baseball you always play like you know you, you let the first three batters you know that will get on base you put them in there and then you put your fourth one in to knock them all in you know so but this other team they were just so like racial discriminative they just wanted to show that they, this guy didn't belong in the league so they put their best uh, four hitters up front. And then that Satchel took this challenge pretty, uh, pretty intensely, and he said this. He turned around to his players and his, uh, that he played ball with. He said, all the outfielders, go sit in the dugout. All you guys on the infield, first base, sit on your base. Second base, sit on your base. Third base, sit on your base. So they all did that. First batter, struck him out. Second batter, struck him out. Third batter. Struck him out. We come back up the next inning. Fourth batter. Struck him out. He has such pitches that he named his pitches. He named his pitches the B-ball. Another one he called uh, the Bat Dodger. Uh, you can imagine that one because that's one of the, that's pretty interesting. And then he had this one. It was his most famous pitch ever. It was called the Hesitation Pitch. Is what it was. It was it would throw off the batter when he would go into the windup. He would pause because you know most pitchers they get a rhythm going and they keep them moving. And so in that, that's how batters can in intimidate. I mean, uh, anticipate the ball coming. And in that, you know, and, and so in that he had that hesitation pitch. You know, that really just messed up a lot of of, of real good batters. Some of his quotes that he has it says, "If you want to be a good pitcher." Keep the ball off the fat of the bat. That makes a whole lot of sense because then that's when you hit the end of where it goes like that. The ball goes where it you know, does. Another quote that he said, it says, work like you don't need money. That's an interesting thought. Dance like nobody's watching. I've done that before. 
you, you can probably catch a YouTube video on that one from somewhere in the past. You know, a little uh, birthday party that we had a while back, a long, few years back. But I think this is the one that really just touches my heart to make us think about where we're going to go from here. This is where it's just like funneling us down to this part right here. See, Satchel was very, um, what do we call it? He, he was very ridiculed because of the discrimination of color. Because when it was at that time of, of life, it was baseball was all white. And then he was the only black man to play ball at that time. And in that, he, he got a lot of a, a, a grief and, and made a lot of fun of. And people purposely tried to hurt him. But as somebody sat down and talked to him and asked him a few questions, you know, and uh, he said after, after um, he was attacked by these slurred racial um, people screaming in, in the stands at him, he said this. When, 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 you, when, you, when, you, when this is coming at you, what do you feel about people saying this? And he said, you've got to love like you've never been hurt. You've got to love like you've never been hurt. I, I think when I'm looking through the past in my life, I, I see this, this meaning here because uh, our culture is a very uh, uh, known culture to, that you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You know, I, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get even with you. Uh, um, uh, Mark Twain, he talked about a lot of things like to really kind of make it relevant to to what we're doing. It's like like a dog. It's kind of cool because you know I have this dog. And we just now got a new puppy. You know, but what if you find a dog on the side of the road? It's all beat up and hurt, and you get in there and you 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 you, you take care of its wounds and and you you groom it and feed it. And, you know, and that dog will never never bite you. But a human, on the other hand, they could beat up on the, be beat up on the side of the road. You could get them in there and get you know put some, some band aids on them and you know get them all cleaned up, give them a shower, feed them, and then 15 minutes later they will absolutely say, "You hurt me, you know, you did this to me, you did that to me," and they will absolutely stab you in the back. So it's almost best, you know, for a lot of people in their mindset is, you know, I, I don't need no friends, I don't want no friends, I got my dog. That's why a lot of you are. You're watching. You know it. You see a lot of posts on Facebook about their dogs because they just, you know, I don't need, I don't need no friends because they just stab me in the back. I'll just stick with my dog. He, I'll, I can spank him for getting in trouble and chewing on my shoe and he'll still lick me in the face in 10, 10 seconds later. But see, Jesus, he, he quoted in, in, in Matthew 17, he says, offense must come. See, in the, the, the years to come, this sermon is really for the 19, this next year in, in 19, that we would look at the interactions that we're going to deal with people. Jesse. You're going to have some heartaches dealing with some people. Oh, you're you're going to have some heartaches with, with the things that they're going to say about you and, 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 and gossiping about you. They're going to say some things or do some things to you, and, and, and it's going to come back to you, and you're going to read it on, on your Facebook page, and they're really mad at you. Or, or you're going to get defriended, you know, or blocked. You, you know, it's, it's the idea of saying, well, how do, we, how do we at this point move forward to deal with what's to come, to deal with our, 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 our as, as followers of Jesus Christ, or even as humans as, as it is? Look, I read through the Bible, and there's a whole lot of references and stories that, that really pertain to love and how we should behave. Look, Joseph, his brothers, they got so whacked out of shape in him, they sold him off into slavery, and then that's not just the bad part of it there. Yeah, he's in slavery. Then he gets this job as a slave, and he's like, I'm loving this job, and he's doing his best, and all of a sudden this woman turns around and lies about him and gets him in trouble and gets him thrown in prison. And he gets put into this position eventually, after a while, being in prison for 20-some years, he gets in this position by God's grace to have power over all, all the land. And now he has the people that hurt him standing before him, and he has the power to destroy them. He has the power to sit back and, and, and to say, you know what? You sold me into slavery. Starved to death. I don't really care. He has the power to the woman who, who, who lied about him. You lied about me? I, I, you know what? Starve to death. Starve to death. I don't care. But he doesn't do that. He feeds them and he loves them where he, they are. 
Moses, oh my goodness, this man here, he, he ends up getting in trouble with his people. You know, and he was raised in the kings and he ends up walking away from the king and, and, and trying to be a part of his people. And, and, and in that, they just turned on him. So he leaves them for 40 years and God's going, look, I want you to go back and I want you to set my people free. I want to use you to set my people free from slavery. And he's like, well, I don't want to go there because then people, they turned on me. The dog bit me type of deal. And in that, he's like, no, I, I want you to go back. So what he did, he obeyed God and he loved the people and he went back and God used him to set the people free. How about David, King David? Law, what a man that would find out what hardship is. His dad thought he wasn't a good enough son to be a king. His, his brothers were so jealous of him that they always made fun of him. And, that, and even when he tried to uh, stand up for them and fight the Goliath, he had a son that turned on him and was trying to steal his kingdom. And then another son who turned around and did something to, to his family and to his daughter. He, he, he just had it all around him, people always trying to hurt him. He had his, his best friend's dad was trying to kill him. You see, people are going to do things like this. They're going to turn on you. Well, look at Jesus. He walked with them and talked with them, healed them, fed them, and the multitudes of them turned on him to a point that cost him his life. That he was executed. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. He was put on a cross. To even think of another man, Job. For him, he thought his God turned on him. Ten of his children killed. All of his animals taken or killed. His own wife was telling him, listen, you, you just need to just curse God and just go about your business. His friends, they just sat there and just kind of just was just shaking their heads saying, you did something wrong, Job. You did something wrong. Make God mad at you or something. You did something wrong. But the thing about Job was that he loved his God no matter what. He did say, I wish I'd never, never been born because my God is so awesome and so worthy to be praised. And in the same, same about us, thinking like that, Jesus, he, just, he, he looked at all the people that turned on him and he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. You see, so I'm taking all of this, these scriptures and these stories and I'm looking at them and I'm just saying, you know what? I, I really find that, that God is telling us for this next coming year, love is the only thing that's going to conquer everything. Love is the only thing that's going to be able to, to uh, 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 look into the hardships of our lives and the things that are being done to us and the hurt and the pain. Love is the only thing that's going to be victorious. Now, I, I kind of think of, of, of it this way. Nitroglycerin is used for two things. One, it's used for blowing up stuff. And two, it's used for things as to heal the heart. How many of you know somebody had a heart problem and they take the little nitroglycerin pills to, to help their hearts? You know, I, it, 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 it's an amazing thing that how this thing can do either one, one or two things. It can kill or it can help and heal. How, how much more is it that we find in our, our lives that the things that come out of our mouth will do one or two things? Kill or hurt or heal? And bless. This tongue has great power. And to bring it to our attention this next coming year, what is it you're going to do that when things and ad, 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 people come at you to say things or do things to hurt you, how are you going to behave? Are you going to use your words and your tongues to curse or, or to be belittle or to, to gossip about them? Or are you going to, to use your words of your tongue to, to speak life and to love and to pray?
came across this story of a pastor. This is just the most wonderful example of how I see this story more than just I see it in his life. You figure a pastor, you know, their, their, their family, should, everything should be good, all hunky and dory, you know, the kids are good, they're just wonderful things, you know, but and a lot of times it's just not so. His daughter had gone off to college and got hooked up with the wrong crowd. Started doing drugs and drinking and partying. And uh, one day that the pastor was on a Wednesday night, he was getting ready to preach. And uh, his wife came in and said, listen, I'm leaving to go get our daughter from college. Because if we don't go now, we might never give her back. You know, most pastors, they feel this responsibility that they got to take care of the church, the people there to go to the church. You know what? And, you know, sometimes, you know what? It's the idea of a misunderstanding. Pastors forget that their first priority of, of ministry is their family. He made a wise choice that day, and he, he handed the ball off to another friend and said, here, I need you to preach. i got to go take care of my family. i got to go get my daughter. So they went up, and they, 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 they uh, got their daughter out of, of uh, school and they didn't even bother packing her stuff up. They just got her. They left everything behind. And they got her back, and they started trying to get her into rehab and do everything they can do. You know, and so many of you can understand this, that you've gone through battles with your children or a, a, a sibling or something that, that has drug problems. And, uh, and then that, they just make some really bad choices when they're on the drugs. And so it was a fight for her life to get her back. And she finally ran away, and then when she ran away, uh, he was searching around for the house for his wife. He couldn't find his wife anywhere. Then uh, he found her on the couch. She stayed on that couch for five days, kind of like mourning the loss of her daughter, because they couldn't find her anywhere. Sometime later, the daughter called her dad and said, Hey, Dad, you know that guy you didn't like? You, you, you absolutely, you, you despised him. Made sure she put it pretty clear across that. I married him. Now at this point in, in most people's lives, it, it's the decision now. What do you do? You disconnect. They're, they've done made their choice. They're going to be drug addicts. They're going to marry somebody I don't want to have in my life because they're a bad influence on my daughter. You know, because of most men, I, I'm going to tell you what, for my sake, you know, it's like I, you want to protect your girls in, in, from any bad influences and then that you will do whatever it takes. It means a gun, a baseball bat, you know, it's a, you know, fist, I'm going to go to jail, you know. And then that, what do you do? You put the godliness aside. You make choices, you know, to say, well, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm going after him. I'm, jer I'm jerking, jerking her out of that house, you know, and away from that man. But, but in that, what is that going to do? Is that going to make the situation better or worse? So he sat down with his wife and they made a choice. They made a choice to love her where she was in her choices. They didn't agree. That's the same with a lot of us. You know, we can, we can look at the people that are around us. Maybe they've chosen the gay lifestyle. Maybe they've chosen the abortion. Maybe they have chosen to move in and live with the, their, their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Well, what do you do in those situations? I think you stand firm. This is what he's doing right here. This pastor, he stands firm in it. He's saying, you know what? I don't agree with it, but you know what? I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you where you're at. And so what him and his wife did, they would just make dates with them so that they could at least stay in touch with them and they would take them out to, to eat. And be able to sit in a public place and just talk to them and love them where they were. Some years later now, that husband and wife, they work for a church. They're following God so close. All because they didn't judge them, cut them off, and retaliate on their decision that they were making. You see, Peter, he, he's the kind of dude that, you know, uh, um, he, he, he's one way or this way. He, he could, I mean, look, he cut off a guy's ear in the, in the garden assembly, you know, to, to protect Jesus. 
And he, he'll hurt you in one minute. But in the next, he'll preach his heart out and bring a bunch of a thousands and thousands to salvation. Well, you know, well, Peter, he, he was married. You know how he was? No, we know he was married because Jesus went to his house and healed his mother-in-law. So in that, Peter, you know, he's such a, a sometimes a, such a wise man that one time he come up to Jesus and he's like, you know, the law says we should forgive three times. So what if I do, if I double it and say seven, I should be good to go. So he goes to Jesus and says, hey, Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Seven? And, and Jesus looks at him with a smile on his face and Jesus replies back, no. Seven times 70 a day. That's 490 times a day you should forgive somebody of the wrong that they've done you. You know why I think Peter was doing that? You know, I think he might have, because again, we knew he was married. I think he had an issue with his wife that day, and he was just trying to get out of, you know, that he, he hit his, his seven times of forgiving her for getting on his nerves or something. I, I don't know. I'm just, that's, I'm, just, I'm just guessing there. But forgiveness is, is, is hard. So I'm thinking, well, well how do we... How can I give an example? How can I give an example of, of forgiveness that, that we should do? The example is this pastor, he gave me the absolute best way to do this. It's first off, is that you've got to open the lid. You need to open the door and make a contact. What he did was, is that, that he, he, he reached out and invited them to, to dinner. So, so it's like this, this ketchup bottle. This is a Heinz ketchup bottle, you know, Heinz 57, you can go online and it, it, it really gives you uh, Heinz.com and it will give you, a, a, it will give you ways to get ketchup out of their bottle. It's little tips of how to get the, the ketchup out of their bottle. You're like, like, what's that got to do with anything? Well, first thing it is, is what the problem is, is that the, the glass bottles have pressured the, the ketchup in the bottle. So if I take the, 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 the how many of you ever gone to the store, I mean, to the restaurant, and you, you, you took the cap off, and you went like this, and, well, that was just the juice. But the ketchup itself doesn't come out, right? That's because there's pressure in there. It's the same thing with the relationship that you're going to be dealing with the problems. The problem is, is you're under pressure. But the first thing you need to do is you need to take the lid off to make contact. You, you need to be able to do things, you know, to, to make a phone call. Write a letter. Send them an email. From that point on, you go to Heinz, and this is what they tell you to do. They find that the, the, uh, there's always a spot. For then, it was the Heinz 57. You saw the 57. There's a side that says, take it and tilt it over. And where the 57 is, you take it and you hit the 57. And then, that, then the ketchup will start. It won't goosh out. But it'll come out little bit by little bit. And that's what you should be doing. Tapping. Tapping the relationship. Touching. Touching the relationship to bring healing. To love. To love. Now it's not like these over here, you know, when you get the old plastic ones, you know, and you open them up and it goes, <laughs> you know, what does that do? It ends up making more of a mess. We don't want a mess. We're tired of a mess. We're tired of hurting. We're tired of the pain. So what we want to do is we want to move forward. And then that, the, the, using it, the, the example of the, of the bottle of, of just touching and showing the love a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Because forgiveness is not about keeping score. It's about losing count. It's not about keeping score. It's about losing count. I think that a lot of our, t our problem is in our culture today is that we're always trying to keep score uh, uh, like it's a contest. I'm better than you. I did this. You did, you know, uh, it's like I got two up on you. And that's just not the way it should be. Sometimes it takes the worst things to you to bring out the best in you. So when things happen to you and you think it's the worst thing in your life, it, you watch out. This is what's creating the character that God wants in you. You see, Jesus, Jesus is the unforgivable. You see, Jesus said in, in, in the scriptures that 
there's some other things other than where I, I, I'm kind of I'm missing what it was that that we as a people think that there's one thing that is an unforgivable sin, and that's blaspheming blaspheming the Holy Ghost. But when I was reading, Jesus said that there's one other sin that's pretty bad and pretty much stays equal with that one. You see, he said that if you don't forgive, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. I think we're going through a, a problem that's in the past of all our issues that we're going through. Relationships are messed up. People are living in regrets because mom died and I never got to say I loved her or I forgive her. Dad died, I never got to say I, I'm sorry. We're living in, in regrets as believers that, that things are happening in our lives and we're having regrets and we're having this, this guilt upon our lives and, and it's, it's, it's causing depression, it's causing a, 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 a hatred amongst ourselves. And in that, it's because of that God's word stands true. That forgiveness is the, is the tool that heals you, fixes you. That when we will look closer to how God sees things, that he's saying that if you'll forgive, I'll forgive you. And in that, it opens up the door of heaven to come through and to use your life. I think this week, when it comes into the new year, I think you really need to think about who is that person that you, you earlier I asked you that hurt you? You raised your hand. Who, who is that person that you thought of and that face came to your mind that you got a problem with that you're holding a grudge against? That you should say, I forgive you for hurting me. You see, there's like... 17 and 18 and 19 year old girls that, that have, go, have gone out this, this this past year and gotten pregnant and now Christian mom and dads are sitting back and they're, they're, they're absolutely in, in disgust that their daughter they raised in church and knows better than that is now pregnant hanging out with this guy that's no good for them and, and, and they're just disconnecting from that. Why can't we just say, you know what? That sin is gone, it's forgiven, now we gotta move forward. We got a baby on the way. We gotta introduce that baby to Jesus one way or another. How do we love those girls? How do we love the, the guy that's involved with the girl? We show them how to change diapers. We show them how to stop the crying. We show them ways to love. Love is this year is going to be hard. So if we look at it this way, Love them like you've never been hurt this year. If we can hold that dear to our hearts to say, I'm going to love them like I've never been hurt this year. I, I think we're going to see miracles after miracles after miracles of people being restored, healing, physical healing. Do you realize so many people are, are physically hurt? Because of the anger and the bitterness that are holding against them. You mentioned the heart issues that are they're, they're, the stress that's going to leave, the, the, the stomach problems that are going to be healed because of the forgiveness. So I challenge you today, as this new year comes up, one of, the, one of your resolutions this year is that you would just forgive and you would live in love. You would move forward, and, and when people will come at you, and the hurt starts to rise up again, then when you will just forgive them.
and then love them like you've never been hurt before. So as we close, you bow your head. For you believers that are following Jesus Christ, I first challenge you to search your heart, to walk in a place of forgiveness. And, but sometimes for us to forgive, we have to ask for forgiveness of ourselves. That in the anger and the bitterness that you're holding against somebody, you're in sin. So as we close in prayer, we would you, as a believer, ask for forgiveness of your sins, of, of the things that you've done? And then in return, will you forgive the person that you're holding something against? Maybe today you're here, you're watching online, and, and, the, and the thing is that you can't really do that because right now you're not a believer, you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. But maybe today is the day that you just... Say, you know what? I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I want to forgive. I want to, I want to try this life that, that is taught in the Bible there. To heal, to be healed. To live a life of love. If you want to be saved today, I have a prayer that you just kind of pray with me. But as we close, as God leads, Will you pray? Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus to give you praise and honor and glory. God, first I, I seek in my heart to ask for forgiveness of my sins. I'm just like everybody else. I'm just going through the struggles of life and people have done me wrong and I've been ugly back to them. Please forgive me. And I forgive them that have hurt me, done me wrong, say things behind my back, gossip about me. I forgive them. Father, I pray you will love them like they've never been loved before because that might be what's wrong with them, that they're hurting and they're in such pain. But I pray you'll heal them, which will draw them to you. Father, for those that today, they're not sure where they would go, that today, if their life was to end, they're just not sure if they'll make it to heaven, or uh, they know they won't go to heaven. God, I pray that you'll just encourage them. Holy Spirit, come upon them and give them courage to pray with this, the, the prayer of salvation. It's in Heavenly Father, I turn to you, asking you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and was raised from the dead to save me. Pray and ask you to make me brand new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to, to live so I can live for you every single day of my life. Father, my life is not my own now. I give it to you. I thank you for my new life. And now you have mine. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Say, Father, hear their prayer of salvation. Give them courage and strength to, to stand bold and, and tell somebody today that they ask to be saved. God, that you'll just move in their life like never before to reveal your love to them. Help them find that if they're watching online, help them find a good Bible-believing church and, and get involved there and, and just to, uh, surround them with some good, uh, strong Christians to, to teach them and show them uh, the, the word of God and, um, and encourage them with good wisdom and how to follow you. God, we just pray your help here, though. You will lead us closer to the cross. Life is hard. Sometimes we just make some really bad choices. We need your help to make the better choices. Bless these people with your love. That this week it will be revealed to them more than ever before that you love and care for them. In the precious holy name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you.